Hey Jack, hello mate. <laughs> hello. <laughs> can you hear me now? Tony just confirmed that you can hear you. You can, yeah, because I had you, uh, I had you muted. So, so my bad. Brilliant. Right. Okay. So, in theory, then um, you epitomise what I wanted this show to be all about because I thought if people were genuinely interested in the man behind the camera, mm -hmm. I am too. Um, okay. I don't care whether you're a professional, whether you're an amateur. What does that even mean? You know, I'm a professional photographer. If you tell me you're an amateur, I'm going to ask you in a second, so don't say anything. And if you okay. tell me you are, does that mean I'm a better photographer than you? Absolutely no, it doesn't. And I just want that, that stigmatization, if that's a word, to be thrown out of the, uh, out of the window right from the get-go. So, Jack, tell us who you are. Right. Well, I'm an amateur photographer. Uh, that's uh, for certain. Okay. Uh, my sort of day-to-day -day role is I'm a manager of um, a retail car sales site. Okay. And uh, I took up photography, I suppose, properly um, in 2017 as a hobby. Oh, that's annoying. So, so um, <laughs> to give you a bit of background on myself, I used to be um, a graphic designer, stroke artist in my sort of teens uh, that's what I did when I left school and uh, as time went on um, as you can imagine Apple Max came in uh, the actual art of doing it yourself commercially was taken away and it was you know what was a department of 10 people went down to one person so I was offered the chance to to retrain um, on a computer and it just didn't appeal to me at the time and okay. um, so I got into the motor trade and um, I've done that since you know the last 29 or so years um, and basically I used to be a bit scared of cameras I think they were too you know daunting all what, what was aperture mean what was stop ISO it was just a complete you know jungle of masses of all things I didn't understand and I thought well I'll get a camera I'll give it a go and if it doesn't work I can't get my head around it I'll basically sell it and, and move on I say I tried it and I bought myself uh, a Nikon D3300 uh, back in 2017 and as most people do with uh, a camera they, they shoot in everything and when they first get one you know they shoot in flowers in the garden anything that you know they can they, they take pictures of and I soon wanted to get out of um, you know, automatic mode, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure I'm all right saying this on here, but um, one guy that I did pick up a lot of tips from on YouTube was Mike Brown, because I know you've interviewed him, Gary. Good answer. Um, and, you know, I, I found him by, uh, as a flute, really. And um, I, that's what started off as a sort of 10 minute, you know, I'll have a quick look, see if it's any good. It was like five hours later, I was just in, you know, so engrossed in it all and it, and it was a good way of learning because Mike has a good way of teaching people I think if, for me anyway you know it was so easy to understand um, and then once that sort of kicked in I started to look at you know different lenses um, that sort of thing and I, I did what most people do I, I got a I think it was a 50 mil 1.4 as my next lens coming from the kit lens which was the 18 to 55 and suddenly it opened up a different you know world again with you know the soft backgrounds you know the bulk and all that sort of stuff and um i did like most people do i made mistakes i was trying to shoot everything at 1.4 and everything was you know all out of focus except a tiny area of the image um, but again, I sort of sat down, watched YouTube videos, went out, practiced, you name it, and really got into it that way. Um, and I think having an eye for things, being a designer, uh, especially working in you know the advertising industry, I had a sort of good basis to work on in terms of what I thought looked good, what didn't, things like that. So, um, so yeah, that's basically how I got into it, really. Um, and since then, I've sort of built a bit of a kit up. I've, you know, sort of concentrated more on landscape photography. Um, I've done portrait stuff, um, you know, of the family and things like that. And just, uh, you know, I find photography such a diverse subject that however much you think you know, you know nothing really because there's so many different things that you can learn, you know. So what kit do you shoot with? now jack 
Right. Well, at the moment, I've got three camera bodies. I've got a Z6 Nikon. Right. Uh, I've got a D800. Okay. And I've got a Crop D7100. And alongside that, I have um, my main lens is a 16 to 35 um, f4. I've got a 50 mil 14, um, 85 1A. 7200 2A, and I think that's about it really at the moment. Um, I've got countless flashes, soft boxes, you know, you can see here there's something um, for when I do stuff at home with the kids and portrait stuff. I've got a fetish for tripods, I have to say, um, something I love to buy. I don't know why. I've got three, maybe four at the moment, and why I need four, I'll never know, but um, it's just something... I quite like to have and mess about with. So I am a little bit gear orientated, but you know, at the end of the day, it's nothing to do with that. It's about getting out there, getting involved, getting out there at those sunrises at 4.30 in the morning and just experiencing all that, oh, really, whatever you've got. It's, you ri know. it's ridiculous at the moment, isn't it? The sunrises well, for me, and sunsets yeah, I mean, ridiculous in the summer. <laughs> I'm about an hour away from the coast. I'm currently in South Norfolk, so we've got... Um, Suffolk one way, Norfolk coast the other, and um, it's about an hour's drive. So, as you can imagine, you know, sort of getting there to set up, getting there for four o'clock, um, leaving the house at three, getting up at half two. The other night, I, I was out uh, in the morning, I went to Suffolk, and I didn't even go to bed. I just stayed up and went straight out. Uh, went to a place called Bordsey um, on the Suffolk coast, and it, to me, it's just that's what it's about. It's getting out there on that beach. I mean, you'll probably notice a lot of my stuff's seascape sure. um, based. Um, that's the sort of stuff I like to do more than anything. Um, is, that your yeah, is that your preference, Jack, or is that just because it's convenient? No, no. I, I, there's something about the sea anyway. I, I just like um, the possibilities you can do photographically with it because you've got the, you know, the movement of the water. You've got the, you know, the vast expanse of it all you've got the subject matter there you know it's just to me it's just my preferred thing with with photography um being north that we haven't got massive vistas to work with you know we've not got the lakes the you know the the beautiful mountains of, of scotland to work with so it, it sort of trains you i think as a photographer living here that you've got to really search out stuff and work with what you've got whereas i'm not you know i'm not saying Having mountains is easy to do for dogs. It's not, and you know, massive vistas. But when you haven't got the easy, what I would call, you know, subjects to go turn up, bang, you've got the image. It makes you really think about, you know, what you've got to photograph and get a good image out of it. Really, that's that's what I like about it. Let me find um, on your Facebook page. It says you're a man. Are you a Mancunian. Mm. I was born in Manchester, lived there up till 10 years ago. And then I live, as I say, South Norfolk. I've got uh, my partner and two daughters, um, Betty and Elsie, that we uh, we moved down here just to have a, a different way of life, really. I, I swear, I've just asked a question. Just asked that question. And somebody's just uh, uh, literally asked the very same question. Can you ask Jack where he's from? Um, my my okay. accent sort of yeah. Although I sort of work in Norfolk, everybody knows where I'm from because it's quite uh, you know a distinct accent, I suppose. Tony, how did how did um, Jack slip through the system? How, how have we got a mank on the system? How have we got a mank on today? How did he slip through the system? I have no idea. <laughs> so you were born and bred in Manchester, then? I was indeed. Yeah, yeah. Was born in Manchester. Um, lived there, as I say, up till ten years ago. And um, my other half, Laura, she's from where we live now originally, and uh, we met up in Manchester. And when we had our first child, um, we just thought it'd be a nice change to, you know, to move somewhere a little bit more genteel. And um, you know, Norfolk's a beautiful place. It's um, it's almost a little bit behind everybody else. And I don't mean that, you know, in a in an awful sense, but but it's great, you know, for the kids to grow up in this area. We live in a you know a rural area, um, and it's just really nice, you know. And the, you know, for me, I, I could live anywhere, but the, you wouldn't believe, guy, the difference when we move. We moved out of a city centre of apartment, yeah, 
uh, in Manchester yeah. uh, with, you know, trams going by, trains, Red sirens Red. going all night, everything, yeah. And then we moved here and we was in a, in a sort of an old Victorian lodge house and it was so quiet. The first couple of nights was so, so quiet. You just... I was scared because it was so quiet. You could hear noises, animals rustling, and it was so dark. There was no, you know, street lights or anything. But now I've got used to it. I have to say, I mean, I go up to Manchester a lot to see me, to me, see me more. And when I come back here, it, it is nice to drive, you know, back home into the countryside and, you know, just a bit, bit sort of quiet away life, really. Cool. How many kids have you got? You said you've got two, oh. two, two girls. One's. Uh, One's nine and one's three tomorrow. Okay, well, obviously they're not listening. So, which is your favourite? Oh, I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> they're watching in the other room, Gary. I don't say that. <laughs> your dad says. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah. Which, if there was one thing you could change about your daughters, what would it be? No, 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 I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Oh, no, I can't go down that. <laughs> <laughs> well, only one thing, he says. Only one thing. <laughs> Jesus could write a book on that. Um, <laughs> Okay, another. Okay, I want to interject with questions as and when they come through because I do find this quite fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, Tony the Wall questions: uh, Do you go to Hunstanton for sunsets? Um, yes. Now I've been there twice. Okay, and funnily enough, the last time I went was last Wednesday, believe it or not. And I got two. Well, I got I got a few images there, but I got two that I shared on on the you know on the group uh, that I was sort of happy with. And um, yeah, I mean it's a good place to go for that. You know, obviously uh, you've got the the the, the sun setting there, and you've got some great foreground interest and stuff like that. Uh, but I've only ever been twice in all the years that I've been doing photography. Um, just I don't know why really. Just because it's about an hour away and. You know, I find it easier to go places in the morning than I do at night sure. because of work and kids and family and that sort of stuff. Um, but it is a great place to go for that. And the beach there on Stanton, it's got some, uh, you probably see the images of like really um, great sort of pebbles and they're all almost in, in lines. Uh, so you could got some real great leading lines there and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it is a great location and I went last week. I think I was close to uh, your haunt uh, yesterday, actually. I was there for a long day, down at Felixstowe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Opposite Felixstowe, which is like a, probably a five-minute swim or an hour drive, you've got a lighthouse there. Right. Um, I think you photographed that lighthouse as well. Maybe that's where I've got the idea to go down. But I was down there yesterday photographing it from sunrise to sunset. So that's okay. why I'm a little bit behind. But, yeah, that was... Uh, that was really well, exciting. Feel, as we recall, Felix Stall guy's got the, um, he's got like a very sort of curved sea defence yes. going out. Yes. Uh, Cobbles Point, I think it's called, which is, you know, really, really well documented. Uh, there is a few sort of old piers and stuff like that. Again, I've only ever been there once last year. Um, and I got some images, not of the Cobbles Point, actually, because I try to avoid that. Um what everybody else does if I can. I mean, I'll, I'll probably try it, but I try and avoid it if I can. Sure. And just look for those things that are a bit different, if you know what I mean. Um, sure. Well, after I photographed the lighthouse, I went across there um, because I wanted to do something um, as a sunset. And when yeah. I went across there, um, yeah, I photographed some of the sea defences there. I also photographed uh, an old pier where you say it goes all the way around. I actually walked all the way out, part of the cow walked all the way out, and that was quite nice. But the tide coming in at its fullest didn't quite match the sunset. So by the yeah. time I finished that shot or that shoot, I then went to that place where you just mentioned where the other kind of triangle sea defenses were. Bob, yeah. Bobble's Point or something. I went there and I actually took a couple of pictures at about half past ten last night before I, right. before I drove home, <laughs> which is a four hour drive, four hours and fifteen minutes. I think <laughs> it is a bit of a trek. I mean, I've done that journey many, many times up to the northwest, and uh, it is a trek. But you know, that's off to you for coming down and try because it is such a great. I think the whole coastline, I'm sure there's people listening here that know this area very well, is that there's so much uh, interest, you know, not, you know, there's a lot of old military stuff down here. There's, um, sure. you know, some really quiet beaches that 
so uncommercialized it's it's lovely you know you've, you've got seals on the beach you've got so much of interest um there was a big whale on one last night <laughs> yeah probably yeah they, yeah they yeah I think. <laughs> oh sorry well it, funny enough there was one i'm not somebody's probably correct me but one of the beaches um last week had one washed up uh, a whale um, wow. i can't remember which one it was um but um yeah i mean it's it's just it's just such a nice coastline, I think. And, um, you know, when I think, oh, where should I go next? I, this, I suppose well, I've been there, but then I go again and I find something else, you know. I, I think uh, there's a place called Shingle Street, which is very, very interesting for photographers because it has a, the, the, the landscape completely changes because it's a shingle uh, base. You know, it, you go in these different compositions every time. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I've got a list of. Um, every t if I see somebody's work and I think that's quite nice and if I find out where it is I just add it to the list because yeah, yeah. You, you do find yourself under a bit of pressure every week when you vlog if you vlog as regular, regularly as I do then you're forever thinking oh my my lord where am I going to go and photograph this week and so yeah, 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 yeah. It's, a bit, it's a bit of a strange one it really is um, I was at one of the forts yesterday and obviously an old military fort Obviously, mm -hmm. it's all closed. I'm guessing it's probably open to the public. That one by Felix Stowe. Uh, and also, this is really boring for people who are watching and people who are listening. But uh, a giant container ship, a big 400 footer came in last night and absolutely jam packed the place. I mean, they couldn't get a car, another car in the car park because everybody came to watch it come in. To watch it coming in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, it, tell you what, that was quite something. I was I started off doing a time lapse, but after about 30 minutes I got bored because the thing doesn't move very fast, does it, without stating the obvious. The, the, <laughs> the scale of those things, though, when they come into a close port like that, it, yeah. it's unbelievable, isn't it, when you see the, the sheer size of those ships yeah. next to you. And I know um, the last time I went down, I sort of, I was in the day, it was in the day, basically, and... Uh, a couple of ships were coming in and out and you just think blind the weight and the scale of these things and again it's something i've never photographed before because at night it's quite nice to lit up all the cranes and and everything but uh, it's something i've never never done i've never been there at night to be fair but well, I, I did take a nighttime shot obviously because when you were where i was shooting because you're on the east coast yeah, yeah. you're on the wrong side obviously for a sunset but when I was, when I, it's difficult to explain, but when I worked for, walked for, further away out to shore, blimey, and then look back at where that big container ship had just docked, of course, now I'm looking westbound and the sun was set, uh, setting behind it and I grabbed a nighttime shot there or uh, the dust shot and it was really, really nice. Probably one of my favourite shots that I took while I was down there. So I'm quite happy yes, with that. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I recommend that if you've never done it. I will, yeah, it's something on my list, as you say, to do. Um, and I think that's a great thing about it is, you know, you can put these things on your map and think, well, I'll go there one night. And then, as we all know, with, with the weather and stuff like that, you can be really lucky, get there, and it all works, it all comes together. And then the amount of times we go to places, and as you say, you know, from a vlogger's point of view, it must be horrendous. You get there, the, the weather's not playing ball, you know, things are going wrong, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's photography, and that's what makes it interesting, really. If it was all dead easy and you get there and it was a perfect setup, it, it won't be as, as interesting, I don't think, really. Well, we're going to... Can you turn Jack's microphone down a little bit? All right, so just, Jack, I'll just turn you down a bit while you're talking. That's, okay, sorry. Uh, no, sorry. No, no, sorry, you, no, you carry on. I'll just adjust it my end up here. That's just Tony's. Uh, he's my manager. He looks after me. Um, okay, quick question from John Hare. Question... What or who has influenced your photography? Ah, well, that's a good question, isn't it? Um, well, I'm very much influenced by a lot of people, not necessarily any superstars or, um, you know, anybody famous or anything like that. I mean, I think just on Instagram and, and Facebook and stuff like that, there's such talent out there that gets unrecognised. I mean... The, the quality of some of the, you know, the photos that get put out and you just mm. look at some of the images and think, this is out of this world, you know. Mm. And I I mean, I, I'm very self-critical. I, I, you know, a lot of my images, I still think are only 70, 80% good. You know, I look at stuff and think, mm, maybe I could have done that a bit different or, you know, whatever to have done this. But I think other people look at them and they think, oh, that's, you know, that's really nice and that's really good. 
But I look at a vast array of people. I don't have any specific, you know, person. I have obviously a style that I like. To, you know, there's a couple of local photographers. Um, Lee Acaster's comes to mind. He's a, a Suffolk photographer. Uh, I think he's been landscape photographer of the year, you know, a few times, or he's had uh, mentions and stuff like that. Um, that sort of style of appeals to me. Um, I quite like, you've probably noticed, minimalistic stuff. Uh, I quite like dramatic stuff. I like movement in clouds, water, that sort of thing. Uh, and to try to really create an emotion when the, the person looks at the image, that's what I try to do. Um, and, and, and sort of, from a point of view, being influenced by many, I think it's just, I look at everything around me as well you know I think one thing it might sound a bit arty farty but when I first got my camera and I started to look at things completely different so I'd be sort of looking for compositions I'm sure other people do this they go out for a walk or they go out on a train or a bus and you're looking around and you're looking for things that create an interest and how could I make that into an image and I think since then it really opened my eyes getting sure. a camera because you see these things, but you don't, I think, in life, generally. You know, it, it's all around you, but you don't notice it. But when you get a camera, you, it then ignites this extra pair of eyes that you think, I'm coming back for that one day because that, that'll that make an image, you know. Um, I think I think looking and seeing are two very different things. Mm, that's I it. I, I mean, a, an example, I, I put an image up the other day, actually, on on your group it was of a chair in the sea yeah. and a few people said to me oh you must have lugged that chair down the beach and all the rest of it and I'll be honest it, it crossed my mind to do that in the past you know I thought should I take you know because I had this mind, image in my mind of having something in the sea isolated all that and I was just down at uh, Bordsey um, the other day and I just as you do, you're walking around, I just sort of caught me out and I saw this chair on its side and I thought, how lucky is that? So, you know, mm. I picked it up, plonked it in the shingle and set it up as best you know I could and uh, took, took the shot. Um, but it's just looking for things like that, whereas I think sometimes you can get a bit blinkered and you can just get there and think, oh, there's nothing here, it's a bit boring. But I think, you you know, you've got to, get your mind, get your mind juices going and look properly and you'll find sure. something to shoot, you know. We're going to look at some of Jack's work in a second, by the way, guys. But uh, once again, I can't stress this enough. If you have any questions, uh, then, you know, fire away. Because I do like I do like it when we get you guys uh, that are asking all the questions because it saves me. Um, Keith Sanders, all right, where is Jack from originally done that? Dave Pierce, is all John's work, John's work? See this? Just explain about your name, by the way. John, Jack, right. Jack, John. Confuse the hell out of me every time I'm, yeah, every time I'm, I'm, right. I'm emailing you back and forth. Okay, well, I was born John, so that's my official name on my birth certificate. Uh, John Patrick, so that's where the JP thing comes from. Right. Um, and because there's a lot of Johns in our family, um, a, a sort of slang word for John is Jack. And yep. My granddad's called Jack, etc. So a lot, of the, a lot of the friends' family know me as Jack, but my close family know me as John. So it gets really confusing on documents and, you know, all these different things. And But generally, it's Jack. That's what most people know. Were you as Jack for. when you were younger? No, not so much. Not as not as a youngster, no. Probably when I started work onwards, really. That's when it... Um... Okay, so you avoided that embarrassing thing where if your real name was, say, Jonathan, for instance, but all your mates know you as John, and then all of a sudden your mum's telling you off and it's Jonathan? Yeah, I know. And you're like, oh, no, <laughs> Mum, don't... Well, I was always John Junior because my dad was called John. Right. And there's always John Junior, and then it was John, John, John P and all oh, that. Anyway, so in the end, I just went with Jack and that sort of solved the problem, really. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Pierce asks, is, is all John, see he's calling you John now, is all John's work all long exposure or does he get his style in post? Um, most of it's done in camera, to be fair. Yep. Um, most of it, I, I, I mean, I don't have an extensive filter collection or anything like that. I've got a 10-stop, 6-stop polarizer, a couple of uh, soft grads, and I just make use of what I've got. Um, I tend to shoot most things at a, at a minimum of 30 seconds, but most of it's two minutes 
a minute, that sort of thing. Um, but most of it's done in, in camera, to be fair. Um, what I tend to do is just balance the shot up sometimes if it's got waves that have created funny lines, um, you know, horizons, if they're looking a bit harsh, or sometimes soften them. But um, it's very rare that I'll fake long exposure. Um, you, you, I have you done can't, it. You can't really. It's very difficult to do that in post production, though, isn't it? It you is. Know. I mean, I've, mm. I've done it. I've done it with skies and that in the past, where I've because I know you don't like long exposure skies, Gary. Do you like sort of crisp? Well, no, I've, 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 I've never said that. What I've always said is... Sorry, no. I, 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 no, but you're right, but I think people have misconstrued what I've said. I always say, take a sharp image of the sky, which gives you an opportunity, yeah. or, or a choice not, in post A choice, yeah, yeah. But I like streaky skies, but only if the streaky sky looks nice. Yeah, Because, you know, yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. on a two-minute exposure, I've just had the same thing now all day yesterday when I was shooting. I was shooting a two-minute exposure or a four-minute exposure, and the sky was hardly moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in which case, it just looks like a blurred sky, and it doesn't look like a blur yes. re sky, if that, if that makes sense. But you know what I mean. Exactly. Well, I've had that situation before where I've looked at it and I thought it doesn't look street enough, where then I've just sort of applied a, a path uh, filter in Photoshop just sure. to, you know, create a little bit of a longer uh, path on the, the clouds that are there. But I, I tend to do it all in camera if I can because. It's just more realistic of what was actually there at that time, I think, you know, and, and the circumstances that was going on at that time. Okay. Um, Paul Ross asked, uh, what, oh, sorry, what is Jack's Instagram page? Well, um, all of Jack's socials I've put down in the notes section of this YouTube channel. So they're all there. His website address. See, I've done my research. His website address, his Instagram, and your Facebook page as well, Jack. You're okay with that? Yeah. Aren't you? Yeah, that's fine. No problem. Well, too late is there anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Gary. I've given it all away. Right. Um, no problems. Now, this is interesting. I want to talk to you about your room. My room? Star Wars. What's on? Oh, yes. Oh, don't tell me you're not into it, Gary. No, no, you know you're an adult, don't you? <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> I tell you, I'm, a, I'm a '70s kid, though. That's the thing, you see. And I, I think it's it's like a, it's a, an emotional attachment, isn't it? But I think you're either in the Star Wars camp if you're not. So, but yeah, you're right. I'm too. I'm too. I'm miles too old for all that lot, really. <laughs> well, my, my lad is my lad is in his 30s. He's like 33 now, and yeah, every yeah. time I don't go to the pictures that often, but every time a new blooming Star Wars film comes out, Dad. Are we going to see the Star Wars yeah, film? Yeah, yeah. And I don't know why he's in his thirties that I can't say, "Son, I'm really not interested. I don't want to go." <laughs> so honestly, I've seen every Star Wars film, and usually in 3D, and it's usually oh in yeah, VR. yeah, yeah. And honestly, I come I come away from it at the end of it and think, especially the last one, what was that all about? What was that all Seriously? about? Yeah, yeah. And then my lad's it's telling just... me what it's a prequel, and and it's and I'm thinking. What? <laughs> it's it's a it's a weird thing the Star Wars thing because I think like if you're in the camp where like myself I grew up um, and I went to see the first one obviously in 1977 and then you know you sort of progress from there and you sure. just get into it. But I think to be fair the the, the later mm -hmm. ones haven't been as good, but I, I don't think they ever will be because I think when you're a kid yeah. and you see films like that, you'll always have that emotional attachment to them. You know, I, I remember you know going in to see all three in one go. I think when they, they brought out The Return of the Jedi, and I'm sounding dead geek here, but when they brought that out in 1983, <laughs> they played all three films together at this local cinema, and we went all day, basically. And it's stuff like that, you know, that you, you can't ever get back, you know. I mean, you, you, you're there as a 12, 13-year-old, and, you know, it was great, really. But, um, but, yeah, I'm embarrassed to say, but... Yeah, it's there on the wall. You're either gaining or losing a lot of fans right now. <laughs> exactly, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Don't talk about football, whatever you do. I like, we'll start an argument. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, red or blue? Oh god, <laughs> you would say that, wouldn't you? Um, well, I have to say red yeah. because the lady in the other room there, right, and her dad are massive reds. Right. Uh, but my dad, um, bless his soul, was a big uh, Man City fan. So I suppose my heart's saying Man City, and 
if I want to get my tea later tonight, I'd have to stay in Man United. How do you get um, split in the family? I don't. That's what I don't understand. I know, you, so I you're know. saying your dad was a City supporter and you yeah. turned out to be a Man U supporter. So your dad, what was your dad was disappointed in you then? <laughs> well, to be fair, he was quite all right about it. But I've always sat on the fence a bit. Anyway, I'm not a massive footy fan, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I will watch it if it's on and stuff, and but I'm not into it like some people. You know, it's like a, a religion in it, but... It's not. I'm not there that much into it, really. But um, <laughs> but it has caused a few, uh, yeah, arguments. Let's say over the over the years, definitely. Uh, Mally Davis is. I move away from football rather sharpish, but I want to talk to you about your room just a bit more before we uh, delve into your photographs. Mally Davis, Mally, how are you, my good friend? Question: What location are you thinking of visiting next? Ah, that's a good one. Um, well, I always hanker to go somewhere else out of my sort of, you know, no, normal zone, if you like, Suffolk or Norfolk. Now, uh, last year, I went up to the northeast uh, for three or four days on my own uh, without the kids and the missus just to have a photography um, sort of few days. And it's one of those situations. I went there and I got all these great ideas and places to go. And I went to go to the, um, is it the Seam? Wheels, yeah, <laughs> which I know you've mentioned before, haven't you? Yeah, I've been there three and times and never seen them once. Exactly. And I got that. I'd done my research and I'd sort of looked on maps and Google yeah. Earth and all. I knew where to park and get there for sunrise and all this carry on. And I got there and I'm walking down, I'm probably in a completely wrong area, and I'm walking down the side of this um, cliff edge. I can see and you there all, now. Go on. And all of a sudden, my legs go from underneath me. I've got my big backpack on, tripod in my hand. I go down like a sack of spuds, and I thought I broke my arm. Honest to God, the, the, the tripod's like dug into my, shoulder, into my armpit. And you know when it just puts a, a complete damper on the day, I thought, that's it now. I'm in pain. I, I, yeah. I looked over here, and I thought, I can't even see the bloody things. I'm going. So I got in the car, and I thought I was nearly, I was nearly driving home. I thought, I should just go home and forget it. Anyway, I went and had a bit of a drive about, got a coffee, and mm. um, later that day, I got a shot at Roke, is it Roker? Roker, Roker, Roker Lighthouse, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I got this shot, which is, I mean, most people get it from the top with it sort of curving. The curly one, yeah. Curling around. And it was middle of the day, really bright and sunny, people everywhere, and I thought, I'm going to get something here. If it kills me, I'm going to get something. So I goes down on the, the beach level, got the, the pier, um, you know, ground level, going round. I had this long exposure shot where it, the sort of pier starts very wide and then sure. narrows down to a point. And I got the shot, and I think it was about a minute exposure, something like that. And um, it acts, I think I, I, I won some competition with that, actually, some like historic. Nice photographer of the year or whatever it was and it come out that that shot come out of complete sort of despair depression and i thought you know what and then i went from there to um this is it steely steely pier steely pier yeah yeah, yeah. i nearly got mugged there as well um by some um people hanging about that looked like they was going to rob all my gear so i was a bit careful there um so I, I sort of, I've only been really away somewhere different like that once, and I'd like to do something like that realistically to answer Mally's question. Um, but realistically, I'm going to probably go um, on the Norfolk coast somewhere next, uh, somewhere probably I've not been to before. Um, there's some really nice places as you go sort of north Norfolk, um, which are like little inlets, Um Brancaster. What about the uh, Lake called? District? There's no mention of the Lake District there. What about the Lake well, District? Well, I'd love to go. I'd love to go to Lake District. But to be fair, Gary, what normally happens is I, I go to Manchester to see my uh, <clears> mum <throat> and I think, right, I'm only sort of two hours away from the, the lakes. Sure. I'll get my ass into gear. I'll get up there and sort something out. But generally what happens is I go up there and then my mum's like 83. She'll say, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? I need to go here, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and then before I know it, the... Um, the, the opportunity's gone really or the weather's not great you know and whatever what whatever the, the, the difference is but um i've been up to um i did a a, a nice shot up at talica i think it's called yeah um, 
Tell us North what... Wales, the lighthouse there. Um, that was on one of my trips up there. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Yeah, I mean, Scotland is the, the place I'd like you know to go up to really, and it's something. Yeah, you need I'd to like do to more do. up north. You need to do more up north. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. got. I've got come. I'm going to say it's bizarre because I'm from there anyway, you know, so why I don't do more there is silly, really, but I should get the answer to you. Well, some street photography. I mean, you're in a fantastic place, aren't you, in that, uh, well, Manchester, for instance. Obviously, you've, yeah. you've got the same down south. But what about street photography? Does that float your boat at all? Um, I did a little bit of it in Manchester um, mm. in my early days with the camera. Um, somewhere, if, if somebody's brave enough to delve deep into the Instagram or uh, flick R or whatever, they'd see some shots from, from Manchester of graffiti stuff, um, you know, some sort of, you know, quite sort of abstracty things. But uh, it was, again, it was one day I did uh, when I was out and about, and I've never really um, explored that avenue. And I know yourself and Gareth and stuff do it very, very well. And it's just something I'd like to do at some point, but the trouble is with me is if I do it, I'll then go do it for six months and I'll go and concentrate on it and things like that. And at the moment, sure. I'm quite enjoying the, the landscape side, you know, and the, the seascape stuff. Sure. Um, the world through... Oh, by the way, um, Steeply Pier, I've got some Ooh. bad memories from up around about those areas. I've got some lovely photographs from up uh, around those areas. But Sea and Wheels, I've been there three times. I haven't seen the wheels once. Uh, I face-planted as well. If you went down onto the beach, you've had to come down... And you've got to clumber down some rocks, some really gigantic rocks. I face planted there as well. It's one of those things where you realise you're old because you fall in slow motion and you can't do anything yeah. to stop yourself. And then when you're lying there, when you face planted, the first thing you start thinking is, is anything broken? <laughs> no, you're not and like and the, the thing is, Gary, it really hurts as well, doesn't it? When you hurt yourself, yeah, yeah, when you yeah, get yeah. a little bit older. Yeah, you're not like a kid where you just very quickly... That's it, up. not at all, not and, at all. Did I mention it? In Steeply Pier, I lost my second drone, and it was a brand new drone as well, flying under Steeply Pier. Now, you've been to Steeply Pier, so you yeah, know yeah, how yeah. high and huge Steeply Pier is. Yeah, uh, yeah, I yeah. flew underneath it and lost a brand new drone. Through no oh, fault yeah, of my own. I think you'd mentioned on one of your vlogs that you'd lost one somewhere. Yeah, I still not still not replaced it. Um, the world through a lens. Hi, Jack. Do you sell your work? Uh, no, I don't actually. I've been asked by um, you know friends and family, uh, colleagues and stuff who've seen my stuff and said, "Oh, could you do me a print of that?" Um, and it's something I've done just on a very low key basis. Mm. Uh, funnily enough, I've sold probably more what I'd call graphic style artwork because okay. before photography, as you can see behind me there, probably on the wall, I've got some stuff that I used to do sort of craft fairs and things, uh, selling, you know, framed pictures and stuff. Uh, but I've probably sold more of that than I have photos. But again, it uh, probably sound a bit lazy. I'm not the sort of person that pushes that side of things, you know, if I set myself up an Etsy or... You're a crap um, salesman, aren't you? <laughs> well, that's the only thing, Gary. If it was a car or something, I'd, I'd be brilliant. But myself, I'm rubbish. And my own work, it's bizarre, really. Oh, but, do, you, do you sell yeah. cars for a living then? Is that what you sell? Uh, I used to do. I used to be... Um, Honest a Jack. Car... <laughs> yeah, like half a daily. Um, I, used to, I used to sell cars on a day-to-day -day basis, but I'm a manager now, so I oversee sales and service for a, a, a local business um set targets so that's it yeah i mean it's it's quite a, a complete excursion from the photography really you know it's it's nice because it's complete different sections whatsoever you know like i can walk away from that and then immerse myself in the photography and and it's a massive difference so I, I really enjoy that, but um, when to get back to the professional amateur business, I, you know, I definitely consider myself an amateur photographer, but in my work side, I'm definitely a professional. I've done it for nearly 30 years, and, you know, you can put me in any scenario in that, and I'll, I would have massive confidence in doing anything, you know. You so, can, you'll deal with it. Yeah, cool. exactly. Look, before we look at your pictures, I still want to mm. look at your room one second. Is that a James Bond car in the middle? Yeah, let me see if you can see it. So I can, I can definitely see it. So that's James Bond. So what's that a poster of? So that was, you know, the film The Spy You Love Me. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 
1977 again, Roger Moore, uh, Barbara Back. Uh, that's um, the Lotus from it. Um, Are you a James just... Bond fan or a car fan? Um, both, really, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, cars are just my sort of lifeline, really, I suppose. I've you know, I've been brought up with nice cars and I've had nice cars myself. Um, yeah, so that, that that's the, the James Bond one. That's there is um, from another film, a car related thing. Um, I don't know Highlander. that one, Highlander. I don't know that one. Yeah, that's um, that's a ooh, 1985, I think. Some people who are watching probably recognize it. There's a Porsche on there, a famous Porsche that's in it. So, okay, yeah, right. That's so the, go, on. go on, that's the room, yeah. <laughs> Right, okay, now the most important thing about your room, the most important thing is you've mm. got some studio stuff in there. So, um, very sturdy tripod, you've got um, a soft box on there, and you've got some backgrounds. Yeah, I yeah. I think they're backgrounds. So what do you do with those? Um, some of the, the, the soft boxes and stuff were bought mainly for photographing the kids, you know, doing stuff, portrait stuff. Um you know, exploring how you use light and, and sure. um, flashes and that sort of thing. And it's just something that's I've accumulated over time. You know, I'm one of these people, if there's a softbox on offer and it's 30 quid on Amazon, I'll buy it and then I've got it. I probably don't use half the stuff I've got, to be fair, these days, but it's just nice to have it when somebody says, oh, can you do me a nice photo of my kids or portrait whatever i've got the gear just to put my hand to it and um and use it so i've got multiple uh, light stands i've got a big uh octa box thing up there uh, i've got multiple soft boxes and recently during the lockdown like most people who've got you know you're not be able to go out and do the landscapes and stuff i've been doing are trying I'll, I'll emphasize is trying to do some like product type photography and it's such a hard genre to do that i mean successfully and the lighting and the the, the techniques that some of these lads use is just incredible and um i've, I've done that for years by the way the tech, um and commercial photography forms as yeah. part of uh of my well not day to day it used to be day to day not so much now but keylight studios uh, dot uk is uh, my website yeah. So key light studios. Anybody listening out there? If anybody's into their commercial oh. photography, yeah. But um, it can be really good, or it can be really, really, really boring. I mean, it's not something that sets my world on fire, but it's something that I'd seen, and you know, when you look at an image and you try to dissect mm -hmm. it, how they've lit certain parts of it, and yeah. then you've got the complexities of how that light hits it and how to shape the light, and that fascinated me. But it's a lot of work, and I did a little bit of it uh, whilst um, whilst it was in lockdown, and it, it uh, hats off to you. I mean, it is it's an art form in itself. That I mean, people it people do fail to appreciate how difficult commercial yeah. photography is. You know, he, yeah, yeah. They'll just see a picture. I mean, just an example is just a chrome. Let's say, for instance, a chrome kettle. Now, you would just naturally assume a chrome kettle. You would just put it down on a base and take a picture. Oh my lord, it is such yeah. a difficult thing to photograph and that's yeah. in a controlled environment where you control everything yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh but of course that's the art form that's the skill that's what it's all about if it was that easy then you know we wouldn't make money from it but i must yeah. admit sometimes it could be really really boring food photography well, is quite good I quite like food photography well i was watching uh a youtuber um i'm i'm, I'm allowed to mention other names yeah, on the i'm sure i am yeah. uh, and i think he's called philip mccardle and if you look him up on YouTube, he's an old school um, product photographer from like the 60s and 70s. Okay. And uh, he does a lot of, I mean, he doesn't do much vlogging now, but he, he has done in the past and he'll show you how they used to do it years ago with mirrors and even with just normal lights, you know, normal standard sure. lamps and things like that. And he, he was, um, the last one I watched, he was talking about some a photo shoot he did for Audi many years ago in the 80s. And um, he was saying that he'd done this, he had to photograph this Audi and it had to have water on the floor and they were trying to make the puddles in the, the water look like the Audi rings of the logo. Right, right. And he said, the, the, the art director had come to him and said, look, we want this shot, but we need it by Monday. This was Friday lunchtime. And if you can do it, 
there's X, Y, Z. You've got it. So he said, I'll do it. And he said it took him, you know, a good all weekend, 48 hours to do it. But he was explaining the techniques that they, they did. And you think nowadays most people just Photoshop that or, yep. you know, they, they, get the, they get the shot of the car, they get the, the you know, the surface it was on, and then they just blob in the, the Audi rings looking like water. Sure. Well, this guy was talking about putting light stands with like uh, uh, syringes and then things that hit the syringes in a certain t- way so that the, all the water dropped at the same time. And you're just thinking... This was, you know, 20 years, 30 years ago, how much of a craft that was to do that sort of thing. And you look at an image, and nowadays it's so easy to manipulate that sort of stuff. But uh, it just fascinated me, you know, the, the techniques, just, just using a little mirror, how it can bounce in extra bits of lights. And well, I mean, if, you, if you think about, you know, if you placed a car down, and then the first thing you do right now is you'll get the perspective right with your camera. Put your camera on a very sturdy tripod. That's it. That's most That's most of the hard work done. Now you yep. talk about lighting, reflections, special effects, but you can take your time and get the front right-hand wheel lit exactly how you want it. Yep. Then you can take your time and get the interior lit. Then you can get the right-hand side, the bonnet and, and the back lighting and shall we have a backdrop let's add the backdrop in post and so all of that is put together now like a jigsaw puzzle but can you imagine yeah. trying to formulate that jigsaw puzzle after you've thought the whole thing through but yeah, make it yeah. all happen with one take yeah That's it is skill. incredible it is a skill and it's very underrated unfortunately isn't it people look at that sort of stuff and think well it's just a, like you say a picture of a kettle but the amount of technique and, and craftsmanship that goes in to get that right, most people, when they try to do it themselves, just fail miserably, you know, yeah. because it's so, it is so hard to do. The only thing I don't like about commercial photography is when people uh, email you asking for a price, it's when they use this term, I only want the pictures for the website. You know, as yeah. if like, yeah. well, I only want a 72 DPI image just yeah. small because it's only going to be a small part of my small website but it might take you two days to create that image you know yeah. especially somebody says that oh, i've just created like um this jewelry and I, I i only want four or five pictures of each of the jewelry you know uh, just so i can display them on my website now that's yeah, two yeah, or yeah. three days work probably in the studio and then another day probably on each piece post process yeah. in that work but they say, I only want the pictures for the website as if that's totally devalued all of my work. Exactly. It's like, okay, yeah, well, yeah. you know, what, what do you want to pay? Just £20 for the whole job, you know, and I'll exactly. work my butt off for a week. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, that's the only annoyance when it comes to commercial work. Anyway, um, sorry, go on. Go on, no, go on, sorry. No, just going to check, make sure if there's any more questions. If not, I think it's about time we looked at your work. Okay. Um, Guys, anybody's got any more questions, by the way, for Jack, fire them this way. But failing that, once again, totally and absolutely disorganized. Um, let's fire up some of these images. Now, I don't know if I've duplicated these images. You sent me like three different sets of files, Jack. What have I got yeah, in front I, of me now before I bring them up on the screen? Yeah, I, I tried to send you a few different variations, really, of sort of what I've done in the past. Um, I think there's some landscape, a bit of portrait there and um so, and yeah a bit of product stuff really who created your your the picture i'm using for this thumbnail by the way the one i've lifted off your is it your facebook page who created that picture by the way is that a selfie which one's that is that the one um just the black and white were you like this were you yeah like, no that, that's one i did yeah yeah that, like that. that's good that's cool right okay yeah. so let's very quickly let's bring up some of jack's work let's how are we going to do this let's do this let's go <laughs> if i go webcam and full screen both you and i in theory should be there mm-hmm. okay let's have a look at this first picture you can't see it jack but the first picture i brought up is the one with the chair i think you've already okay, explained yeah. about the chair but if you yes. guys take a look at this let me just double check and make sure i brought that up right hang on a sec webcam and desktop so in theory you and i should now both be up there so that chair was quite literally just dumped. Yeah. Yeah, If it, the, the area where it was, it's a place called Bordsey, and it's uh, it's got an old, big old house there, which has got a lot of military uh, background. There's a lot of old sea defences there. 
uh, and it's quite an interesting area and generally you know as you know with like coastal erosion there's a lot of cliffs that are falling down trees sure. you know obviously in the beach things like that and i've been there about three or four times and captured different things and i went on uh, i think it was saturday uh, morning uh, as i said i didn't go to bed that night I stayed up drove down there got there about 4 a.m and unfortunately well, the tide was slightly against me because to get to where I wanted to be, um, I had to cross this sort of very narrow path that's raised up. Okay. And the, le- the waves were sort of whipping up over it already, and it was difficult to walk on. So I sort of gingerly went across, um, got to the other side, and then there was all this sort of, um, you know, old trees and stuff all flowing about. And then that chair was just wedged sort of between a tree trunk, a tree branch, and... Um, and, and, you know, some fallen cliff. So I don't know what its story is, how it got there and things like that, but I just managed to fish it out where it was and just <laughs> plonked it in the, the shingle that was there. And luckily, I think that shot, as I remember, is about 30 seconds right. uh, because I'd done a couple of the shots of it and there was a slight bit of movement. Um, but that one, there is a touch of movement on it, actually. If you pick up peep it, there's a slight little bit of ghosting, but not mass you know it's not massive um but yeah just that was just a one of those shots that you you get there and it just the props there you know it's just come to to come together really so i was i was going to ask about that picture then so you've taken that shot at a 30 second exposure is that the original sky or have you changed the sky the sky is the original but i've just blend as you can tell blended the horizon a little bit um brought some of the colors out uh, enhance the sort of light in the middle um but yeah that's basically i mean obviously with with a harsh horizon line it looks it, it i think it takes a little bit away from the chair it almost looks a bit you know if you're trying to make a surreal looking scene sure which it is then a, a harsh horizon would you know spoil that in a sense so by blending the two i think it in a way if i didn't have the the sand and the pebbles at the bottom it could almost be cloud-like, you know, in a sense. It could be up in the clouds. But, um, but well, yeah, just one of those sort of shots, really. I'm lucky, really. To- I've just done a video on, um, like I said yesterday, and uh, I'm making a video on, it's like fine art photography. And this, to me, epitomizes what I would consider to be fine art photography. It's great. Yeah. The movement in the water, the simplicity of it, uh, the minimalistic style. Uh, I just, yeah. I love all of that and it's fantastic and do you know what if you said to me right now oh yeah well you know that sky is a different exposure but it was there but i shot it an hour later and i i added the yeah. chair i wouldn't give a rat's to me no. at the end of the day it's about what i can see in front of me and even if you said well actually gary i'm not prepared to say how i took it i would accept that as well because as far as i'm concerned yeah. i just love that picture i think it's great but I think, you know, I think you mentioned a couple of vlogs ago where people were sending images in for critique. Yep. And a couple of images that you mentioned, you, you sort of said they look a bit like snapshots because, you know, there's random things mm-hmm. in the shot and things like that. And I'm very mindful when I go to take an image that, you know, I try to simplify as much as I can. And unfortunately, you know, to the right of that chair, there's, there was like a little um, top of a sea groin sticking up. Right. But it looked, in the distance, it looked like a dust spot almost, really. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't ever leave that in, would I? Because it would detract from what I'm trying to say on, on the image. You know, it's, I'm simplifying, I'm making it look, you know, fine arty. Um, but you know, if I was taking that image just as it was with the, the water, you know, a, a 50 for the second in the sky, it, it wouldn't have anywhere near the same impact, would it? Because it, it, it would just look like a chair in somebody in some water. Absolutely. And um, it, it's very difficult, you know, because I'm going to critique people's work after this, Jack, but it's very mm-hmm. difficult when you start critiquing work because you look at, yeah. you look at work like this and I, I just think it's exemplary. <laughs> and there's always fault with everybody's work, but... You know, at the end of the day, there's always faults with my work. It makes no difference. Mm-hmm. And, and art is subjective. People will look at this picture and hate it. I look at this picture and absolutely love it. But some of the some of the 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 not, not not so much complaints, but people always say to me, Gary, when you go to the seaside, why do you always flatten the sea? Why do you always turn the sea into what I call an ice skating rink? Because like you, I'm a massive I'm a massive fan of you know my ten stop filter. Yeah, yeah. And like I always say, well, if you don't 
you end up with a picture that could have been shot on an iPhone, you know, yeah. without any care or thought. It, it then becomes a snapshot. And unfortunately, in my opinion, this is only my opinion, if you mm -hmm. shove a 10 stop filter on there and you, you know, shoot this particular shot like you've done now with a longer exposure to create movement, then that's, that's artistic. It is. It's, at the end of the day, Gary, as well, you know, you, you get there, you invest the time and, you know, the money as well for the stuff that we, we all buy, you know, yeah. and filters, tripods, whatever. And you wouldn't go there with a bag full of stuff and not use it, would you? And at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people have said to me, oh, well, do you go to an area with a shot in mind? And to be honest with you, no, I don't, because mm. I, I try to deal with what I've got when I get there. Because if you try to plan too much, it more often goes wrong. You know, I mean, yes, I've thought about taking a chair to the sea or some other objects and putting it in the water. But, you know, to, if I've got a bag with a 10-stop filter, a polarizer, whatever. I've got it. I'm, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. <laughs> and at the end of the day, the difference is, is that if I put that image on, like you just said, as a snapshot, then have I really... Is it worth my time to go and do that? Whereas I'd rather have something that I could say, you know what, I'd put that on the wall or, I'd, you know, I'd put it in a frame because it's just something you've created with sure. what tools you've got. You know, and I, 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 you know, I don't want to sound like, well, not everybody's got a 10 stop filter, not everybody's got a polarizer and a good tripod, and we all have to start somewhere. But I think if you have a vision of what you want to create, then that's, you know, the way you would do it. You would get the tools to do the job, really. Uh, and not only that, but I've mentioned this on one of my videos before, and I've mentioned this, and this is absolutely gospel. I swear. I went and uh, did a talk at a camera club, and I was obviously showing you work off on it. Ooh, that's really, ooh, that's really nice. Ooh, that's really nice. And I, I, I actually encourage people to say to me, guys, do me a favor, you know, just so I know you're not just there just to suck up to me and blow smoke on my backside. If you don't like mm -hmm. the pictures that I'm yeah, showing yeah. you, just tell me. Just tell yeah, me, yeah. and, and I, I swear, one girl actually said to me, "Well, Gary, yeah, I, I don't like that because, you know, um, it's not right. It's not because it looks false because the sea yeah. isn't, you know, isn't as it should be, and so on and so forth." And I said to her, and and I said this obviously with with respect, and I've said this on my video as well, is good. I'm glad that you don't like it, but I don't care whether you like it or not because yeah. I took this for me and I like it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm obviously not saying that to sound rude. What I'm saying is, if you don't like it, perfectly fine. You take what yeah. you like. And that's the same for everybody out there. If you don't like this, fine. You take what you like. And that's how we should all operate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In yeah. my opinion. Because at the end of the day, we do do it for ourselves. I mean, it's nice that people like your work and like your images and stuff. But. If you do decide to put it on a wall or whatever, sure. it's it's nice to have it how you want it to have it at the end of the day. And, and you know, as you say, you're not going to please everybody, but that's, you know, generally speaking, isn't it, really, in life? You know, not everybody's going to like everything, so... Absolutely. Jack, is your daughter called Laura? No, that's Laura's my other half, but it'll be my daughter Betty probably. In, is she is she trying to comment at something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure. I, I wasn't sure to handle it, but Laura Brannan come through. That's my dad. So I wasn't sure. Yeah, no, no, that, that, that's. A, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's that's that'll be Laura's account. She's going on, and she's probably watching me and commenting because she's she's like most nine year old girls at this stage. She's glued to the phone. <laughs> Uh, she's TikToking all day, and she wants to be a, a YouTube superstar. So she was quite chuffed when I said I was doing this. She she thinks I'm cool now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Laura. So uh, you're a superstar now as well. Thanks for commenting. If you've got any goss, by the way, about your dad, let us know that as well, please. <laughs> um, all right, okay, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure whether to say anything. I apologize. Yeah, no worries. All right, okay, mate. Sorry. Uh, let's let's very quickly move on then. Uh, just because it's random. Okay, we've got a picture of a shoe. I think uh, this is making reference to uh, you trying out your commercial photography. Yeah, something I did during lockdown. I thought I'd include it because it's not the greatest shot in the world, but it's something that I had to go out and tried. Yep. Um, I don't know if I posted this on your group with some back, you know, behind the scenes stuff, okay. but basically that shot was taken with a, a light stand holding the shoe up with fishing wire. 
and the, the laces and everything were all held up to give it that sort of um, floating feel. Sure. Um, and it was just an experiment, really, to try different lighting and stuff like that uh, to be, you know, a bit different to what I normally do, really. And uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed it, but it's difficult to get it to look right, you know. And, I mean, obviously, I photoshopped out, the you know, the fishing line and stuff like that and, and made it look right. But what fascinates me, again, is you think something's looks good but then when you start to get into it properly and you see dust and marks that you never knew was there and you have to start cloning it all out and things like that and you say you do appreciate what <laughs> you know what an art form it is really well that's right I, mean, I, I put a, a tag watch on my um my website <clears throat> and there must be about six hours worth of post-processing on it just yeah. alone and that doesn't include the whole day it's taken us to photograph you know just one damn watch face it's, yeah, it's a yeah. real skill and it's a real art form. But, of course, there's so much that goes into it. And we're only looking at this now. Can you imagine if you are being paid by a client like Adidas and this is going to end up on a 50-foot yeah. billboard? Billboard, yeah, yeah. Wow. And you've got all your other peers and everybody that hates you because you've won this, comp you know, you, you've won this contract, and they all want to start picking faults. Want to rip it to bits, don't they? Wow! I mean, the pressure yeah. of commercial work at this yeah, level yeah. is unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. Yeah, no, that's that. That's a that's a fine job. But the laces, tying the laces up, getting the lighting right, make sure the name is visible, make sure the back yeah, and the yeah, front. Yeah. Oh, there's so much that goes into it. And one thing that I, I disliked when it came to stuff like this is sometimes, like you mentioned, now I've never been that high up when it comes to um, commercial photography, but sometimes you can end up with like a creative director, like you mentioned earlier on about that photographer yeah, yeah. guy. But now you've got the vision of the photographer against the vision of a creative director. And yeah, imagine yeah. working for Adidas, you're now thinking, wow, this is fantastic. And the guy from Adidas says, well, actually, you can't really see the toe. I want to yeah. see the front of the, you know, and it's like, oh my That's God. That's it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've just spent like 20 hours in processing and setting it up. And then you just said you want to see more of the logo on the back or yeah. whatever. It, it just, yeah. I mean, there's so much work goes into that and it must be so hard to get right. But, you know, that's, that's what people do, don't they? You know, that's their job and, and you know, they excel at it, really. So. And this is just for a shoe. Can you imagine then if you're yeah. dealing with um, um, models on top of that as well? You know, yeah, di yeah. diva models. All, all the variables <laughs> of all that lot. Yeah, yeah you can imagine Naomi Campbell and everybody, all them all chipping in and, you know, it must be a nightmare. Right, let's fire, let's fire this up, let's fire this up, another one. Okay, we're just looking. Do you know what? I think this is where I was yesterday. Okay. <clears throat> There's a picture of, it looks like the, the very start of a pier with just like six groins or something, like, mm -hmm. but the rest of the pier is missing. Is this by Felix Stowe? No, no, that's in a different place, mm -hmm. that's, okay. that's in a place, uh, it's in Suffolk, uh, but it's a place called Corton, okay. uh, which is uh, sort of going back towards, uh, you know, the Norfolk way. But uh, that, the story of that shot is, um, I was out again one day and there was these old uh, sea uh, groins uh, out in the distance and sure. um, they, they just caught my eye. I just thought they looked quite isolated and... They had a lot of character to them, as you can probably see. There's a lot of detail in the the, the wood, and they look like they're really worn out. And um, yeah, I think I shot that at, with his 7200, so it's you know sort of quite zoomed in because uh, they were quite a distance out. But I uh, just something appealed to me, just a feeling of sort of isolation, but a lot of um, you know a lot of detail in it as well. You know, a lot of character and. Quite, quite like meticulous, that. very fine arty. I love it. I love what yeah. you do with the horizon, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because I, even I picked up on stuff like that. There's a couple of photographers who I very much admire, and this is why I think I picked up on your work as well, mm -hmm. because having the forethought, even I'm looking now, I'm almost looking like to try and find out where the horizon is because the mm -hmm. sky is tremendous and the sea is tremendous and how it's blended together is brilliant. And that is a piece of artwork that perhaps lots of people would be very happy to have on their wall. Very, very it's, nice. It's, it's funny you should say that, Guy, because um, I, I had a shot out, um, I think it was that, that chair um, shot uh, this weekend on, on social media, and a, a guy got in contact with me and he said, 
would have you flipped the her, you know the yeah. the chair around so it's because he said your eye naturally leads from the left to the right in the frame yeah and I said well I have I said but what makes me like the shot I took is because it's going against that you know it's going against the grain if you like so you know when you see something that almost I don't want to sound like it makes you uncomfortable but it makes you look a bit harder sure and i think sometimes those sort of images are more compelling because it's not oh yeah it's left to right that's it it sort of makes you look and think well what is it you know and that's what draws that's draw, draws me and anyway I'll, 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 you know you can look at a million photos a day on flick art but there'll be one that will just go boom what's that and you, it's because you want to know what it is and it might be something that you don't see very often you know or whatever it might be um and that's again i think an image like that people might think well what is it and start looking and and see the detail in the in the wood and things i also think if people have to ask questions or question it then you've done your job right yeah (laughs) you have that's it yeah 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 yeah. i love that that's really 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 nice Uh, and again see these are the pictures that i was picking up on and the reason why you're here now is because i love this style it's it's i'm not not saying it's very much me but this is exactly the sort of stuff that i I love to do and my pictures from yesterday will end up looking like this as well i just think that that is a piece of art and that is just Uh probably old groins or something coming from the water but uh, but it's just the way it's presented is phenomenal, in my opinion. Well, ironically, Gary, this shot here was um, the first shot out of the bag when I went somewhere a right. couple of weeks ago. This uh, to a place called Hayes Brew, which anybody from who's watching from Norfolk will know very well. Is uh, it's very, been hit very hard with you know um, the erosion. These parts of it fell in, and the old defences there are. Uh, very much like that where they're all just basically sure. falling down and um it's 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 a bit like it's a bit chaotic the place you know when you talk about woodland photography and you say you go and it's chaotic yeah. there's stuff everywhere well Haysbrook can be a bit like that in a sense it's you get a composition and you think mm, well that's in the background or that's in it you know there's a big lump of metal there and stuff and it's that point where you say, well, do I clone that out? Do you know we we're talking about before? Do you you know do you take things out on purpose because of a distraction and things like that? Yeah. And this particular shot, um, it was uh, the first shot out of the bag. And if I'm being honest, to the right there was another little groin that just didn't look right. Yeah. And I took it out because it it, it didn't look like a groin. It looked like a smudge on it. To be fair. Um, but again, that shot, you're just walking along and you just see the uniformity of the pulse and, you know, I sort of moved it left to right to see whether I wanted to get the pulse offset that are behind them or whatever and, and came out with that one. And it just, I don't know, it just seemed to work as a fine art piece. You know, again, if you took that image in real time, uh, you know, a 50th of a second with the sea and the sky, it just wouldn't. It just looked like a snapshot, really. But it it think... will look like the same picture that everybody else will take if they stood. Mm. Unless, of course, that that everybody else is somebody who knows what they're doing with the camera. And, of course, mm. only if they like this style. I can't stress this enough. You know, this is... Yeah, art. exactly. Yeah, it's not everybody's cup of tea, is it? You know, That's at the correct. end of the day. Th- those three letters, they mean so much. A, R, and T, they mean so much because yeah. it's... Sub- oh, the word subjectivity is just un- unbelievable when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to the word art. Yeah, I love this, absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Um, okay, a picture of a man. Right, well this is, uh, this will be my dad. Oh, um, nice. Now, uh, sadly I lost my dad a couple of months ago and um, oh, this this shot, um, we took round the house one day when I went to visit it yeah. and um, I had some of my soft boxes and stuff with me with a, an idea to shoot my mum and dad, you know, in this sort of style. Sure. And I went up there and um, uh, sadly my dad developed, um, you know, a form of like, not Alzheimer's, but uh, dementia. Uh, oh, right. And he, you know, he knew who he was and everything, but he, you know, he'd sort of got to a stage where um, he, he wasn't the same. And, and to be fair, this shot was taken about two two and a bit years ago 
and it's one of my favourite shots because I think it not so much photographically lighting wise, but it's just caught an expression. I think I took probably twenty shots um, that day of my dad and my mum, and it's just something that reminds me of him. His, his expression, it sort of almost talks to you. My mum jokes with me about it because she said, you know, it feels like when we've got the the picture up at my mum, you know, my mum and dad's home. And she said it almost feels like he's following me around the room when she's walking around doing the chores and stuff. And I don't know, it's just an image that I like as a portrait. I think it just I just lit it nicely and I just captured something there, you know, an expression or a moment really. Yeah, very nice. It's one of my favourite shots. Very, very nice. I do like it, I must admit, I do like it. That's nice. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Thank you. Bless him. Bless him. Let's have a quick look. Okay. Let's very quickly whisk on. Um, okay. So we're now looking at another, um, 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 I'm not obviously sure where this is. Sunset. Uh, again, long exposure shot looking out. You probably can see it if you've got the live link. Uh, or I could, just, yeah. I could just tell you the number of the file, couldn't I? Number Image three. Okay, well, this one uh, is a long exposure at um, near Hunstanton, what I was talking about before, okay. uh, last Wednesday. Yeah. And um, I'd sort of had this on my radar for a while uh, to, to take a picture of. And it's basically, it's, um, it's like a concrete hard standing that goes out to those rails, which, which almost looks like a viewing um, a point. And it's got, obviously, the post and, and stuff. And behind camera so where where I was stood there's another one of those um, fence sort of panels sure and the original idea was to get the water completely over submerging everything yeah. and get both levels of fencing but it's because of the tide and the sun uh, set that's the sort of best I could get out of out of that it, at that point in time uh, sure. so I took a few uh, shots of this um i think that's probably about two minutes or something that one are you going to go back um, when the tide's higher well that particular night that i think that was about nine nine fifteen and i waited till 10 o'clock just to see how far it would come up and I, I i don't know if i've shared it with you but i've done another shot of this which it totally submerges that concrete ah, and it's right, just okay. it's just basically that little viewing port in the sea as a long exposure and it, again it's a bit of a fine art sort of shot but um yeah it's just that was last week and it was just again um the test shots i did at first just it, it didn't particularly look good because if you look closer there's there's actually signs on the concrete um that says like warning don't stand on here and all that sort of thing sure. but it works as a long exposure because, it, again, to me anyway, this is only my opinion. It it creates an, a mood and you know an atmosphere that what actually is it? You know what is that sure. leading line? What what's going on there? Yeah, no, I love it. I think I think it's a great great shot. I do like that. I think it's really nice. It'd be mm -hmm. interesting to see what that would look like on a high high tide. You know, if you check yes. the tide times and when you know yeah, for yeah. a fact the tide yeah. is going to come over there. Uh, then that would be uh, probably a very this, this, the very same shot, but with the yes. water fully over it. But if you said it fully already, over it, yeah. is that the original sky? Yes, yeah, that's how it was last Wednesday. Um, there's nothing been done mm. to that really. Maybe a little bit of saturation on the the oranges and the yellows just to pull sure. them out a bit sure. from the file. But uh, no, that's the clouds, the sky. Um, that's as it was basically on the night. Um, Okay. And yeah, it, I, I don't know. It just—it's a place I've wanted to visit for ages, and looked at, at that particular day. I just thought I'll look at the, the tide times and what time sunset is, and boom, that was it. Really, got up there and got myself sorted up there. Okay, love that. Now let's have a look at this. Uh, this is you're at the shingles here now. Then yeah, the black and white one. Um, yeah, this those houses, I believe they're. they're they're quite popular in photographers' pictures. Yeah. I've I've never shot this, but I remember I said to you earlier I've got a list of images, uh, not yeah, images, yeah. a list of places to visit where I've picked up on other people's pictures and thought, yeah, that looks a really interesting place. Let's go there and take some pictures myself. And this is actually on my list of places to visit. Yeah, so that's why yeah. I actually recognise the houses. I haven't seen a, a shop like this, by the way, but this is really really nice. 
Really well, nice. this one, this one, Gary, uh, the place is called Shingle Street, and yeah. um, there's there's a couple of there's, there's those two houses there that you can see, and then there's some more to the left of this uh, of Camry, if you like. Yeah. And it's a you know it's a well shot place, and that particular composition um, has been done quite a few times. But um, what I wanted to get there is, as you can see, with the water sort of almost misting as it's coming in and out. Yeah. I wanted to try and give it that sort of moody look. And the, to be really honest, nice. original, the original shot, which I've got somewhere probably on my website, um, has got more cloud movement in it, where there's more streaky clouds. It's a colour version. And I, I kept looking at it and thinking, how can I make it more dramatic? And by pulling that sky and sea in, you know, to almost create a letterbox effect, sure. it just obviously pulled you straight in. Um, but... Again, it's a fantastic uh, location to go to. Um, a lot of people have, have captured that, but, um, you know, it's just my take on with the waves. I think, again, that was probably about a minute exposure, something like that. Uh, but again, I, I, funnily enough, I was there on uh, Sunday because Bo- Shingle Street and Bordsy are very close to one another. Okay. And if you go to one, you're going to go to the other. You've got to do because it's like literally five or ten minutes in the car. And I went on Sunday. It was about... Well, it'd have to be boards, so it would have been probably about seven o'clock in the morning. And I thought, not to get that shot, because I've already got that, and and I got there, and the sky was cloudless. I was trying to look for some sort of minimal um, shots of maybe the shingle and stuff, but I did take a couple of pictures, but I just... I've looked at them and I just can't do anything with them. I, I'm just thinking, <laughs> I, I, you know, I've got loads like, like that. <laughs> the best are like is sort of four or five out of ten, and I'm, I've tried to process them and I just can't do anything with them. So it's a, a place that I went, and you can be lucky, you can get a good sky, you can get good shingle movement. But the, the thing when I went in on um, on Saturday, I was there setting my camera up and trying to compose a shot, and this guy walks up about 20 feet away from me and he goes morning and it's morning and he gets his his phone out and he's taking pictures of the same sort of composition I am and I thought oh and he he didn't have a bag with him or anything I thought oh what's he up to this is bear in mind this is like seven o'clock in the morning as well yeah anyway next minute he's stripping all his clothes off and he's, he's getting his trunks on and he ends up going in the water and he's going for a swim and uh, there's me thinking, oh, he's just like somebody taking a few pictures. But uh, fair play to the guy. The guy's getting in the sea and he's having a swim at 7 o'clock in the morning. So you just <laughs> see everything, don't you, when you're out and about at the, the early hours. It's, I saw the same thing yesterday, exactly the same thing. Yeah, there must be about two or three people that stripped off and went in the sea. Yeah, just yeah. in the sea, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mental. Yeah. Um, what I like about this particular shot as well, it looks as if you're actually taking this from a boat. Yes, Because you yeah, can't see yeah. the lie of the land, but clearly the water, you know, brushes up. On the left-hand well, side of you, it looks as if you're actually out at sea taking this. That's image. it, exactly. Well, the shingle bank there, traditionally, is sort of, if, if you were stood at camera, sort of goes in front of you now, like as a curve. Yeah. And as I say, it shifts all the time. If you, if anybody ever uh, looks at images of Shingle Street, they'll just see so much variation of the, the way it all moves. But sure. that shot, you can tend to get that look as if you're in a boat or you're on some sort of island uh, looking back back at it no i love that okay where are we where are we now where are we did i miss i think i missed one i've missed one okay uh let's go back to one second uh image number well i've got his image number one uh that's with the splash oh yeah 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 again that's just one that sort of came out of nothing really Uh, it's not my, my best shot by any means but i just think it's a bit interesting because of the way the waves crashing the the old concrete block or whatever it is uh, there's a bit of movement in the water in the foreground um, the waves in the background are sort of swirling I don't know it's just something that makes you look at it doesn't it really and makes you think what is it and I what's do going like on it, yeah. there so, something like half a second ex- exposure is it yeah I can't remember to be honest something like that I mean mm. with those sorts of shots what I tend to do is uh, put a film like a six stop in depending yeah. on obviously what the ambient light's like and yeah. then just play around with different um, levels, you know, so I'll just half a second, six second, a second, two second. I'll, I'll play about so I get the look of the the fall off, and then once I'm happy with something, I'll then wait for the 
opportune time. But I mean, that one was just a fluke. He just hit it in a certain way, and 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 it was and it come out nice. So yeah. Jack, I think all your images are pretty much three by two orientation. Mm -hmm. Do you ever shoot any other orientation, 16 by 9 or anything like that? No. I, I, funny enough, I was, I was thinking about this the other day. I thought whether you'd ask me this question. And I, I don't know. I've never done panel stuff. Okay. Never, ever done it. I know you've done videos on it and, you know, other people have done videos on it. But it's just something that's never, when I've been out in the field, I've never thought, oh, I'll, do, I'll try a panel of that. And I should do, really, because it's something that you can capture so much more in. But, again, it's just something that hasn't been on my radar for some reason, you know. And I don't tend to crop stuff much, as you can see. Mm. Uh, I do the odd square crop and things like that. But, um, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's what it is but I just when I compose something in the camera I tend to compose it how I want it to be you know I know there's different trains of thought on that and you can say well you know I'm going to go back and I'm going to crop it and square pop sure. it and all that but um, I tend to just do it as I see it and, and process it there's no, I mean, it, there isn't a right and wrong way that that's for sure but when it comes to me and um, creating panos more often than not if I create a pano it's only because I want the image slightly wider than a 24 yes. mil 24 mil for me just is is the right focal length. I just love 24 mil I think it's brilliant mm -hmm. I've used a 16 mil lens and I just don't like what a 16 mil lens brings to the table I really don't but sometimes I like a bit more compact into my 24 mil, which is like a 16 yeah. mil. And so more often than not, and I did the same thing yesterday as well, is I create a pano just for that and not a crazy letterbox image, if yeah. that makes sense. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'll tell you a point on, I mean, when I first got my first wide angle lens, I think I bought a 10 to 20 uh, from a crop camera which would probably work out about sort of 16 mil anyway, something like that, mm -hmm. the, the wide end. And it fascinated me at first, you know, you, you get in close to something, you get that mm -hmm. distortion and you get that real sense of scale. But as you say, you know, the, 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 the distortion you do get, especially when you're trying to do a structure or a pier or whatever, and it, you know, it just doesn't, it's got its its moments that, but I think you're right. If you want that bit more width, you've got to do a panel, even though it might not be a full panel sure. uh, in, the, in the traditional sense. But uh, it's something uh, it's, I must try because I, I, I do go out occasionally with a friend who's a photographer, and um, he I was saying to him before the lockdown, we should try more of that, you know, because it's sort of thing, just another strand in it to, to say, well, I've got something different, really. Yeah, and not only that, but when you turn up at the location, like that last shot that we just looked at there, that, that shale beach, is that, you know, you could have just tried, I'm not saying, yeah. hang on, I'm not saying you should have or not, or you could have, I'm just saying, it's like you say, it's just another angle to go at while you're there, yeah, it's yeah. another angle yeah, to go yeah. at. Because what I tend to do, and, you know, Adam from First Man Photography, we've had this conversation before, and what Adam will do, Adam will spend a long time walking around and walking around and then eventually deciding on a particular shot that he wants to grab. Mm -hmm. Where for me, as soon as I arrive at a location, oh, this looks good, camera out, tripod out, yeah, I take yeah. the picture and then I walk on, oh, this looks good as well, or this looks even yeah, better, yeah, yeah. I'll take this. And to me, that's why I'm there. I want to take as many pictures yeah. as I can and I'll come back and then just cull what I, I think are the weakest. And that's just the way I work. So that's very reactive then, isn't it? You sort of just get the camera out, see something, right, bang, I'll have that, 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 that. Whereas I'm probably a bit more like Adam, uh, whereas at one time I, I was thinking about this the other day, when I first started uh, the landscape photography, um, I went very early one morning uh, to the beach and I got uh, one of these sort of variable uh, 10 stop things yep, that screws onto yeah, the yeah. lens. And I, I got one of them, and to be quite honest with you, it turned out a right mess. You know, I couldn't get it right. I, I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest with you. But when I was there, I must have spent three hours at this beach because in those days, I think what I used to do is I used to photograph everything. So I'd do the, the wide landscape, and then I'd find, like, a little rock or a pebble or something, and I'd do this, like, really sort of intimate shot of the pebble with, you know, shot at 1.8, you know, soft background and you know see something like a nut and bull on a, an old pier and i'd be i'd really focus in on things and i used to come away with like 300 shots sure and 
and I used to look at them and think, oh yeah, I'll use that, I'll use that. But then more often now, I just go and take probably ten shots and come away. Yeah, you know, yeah. I really, really, you know, just minimal <laughs> stuff, and I don't know why I do that because I'm probably missing so much that you could have. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and. Yeah. You know, it's just getting back into it, really. You know, at one time I used to get do the 16, 24 mil wide angle shot, then I'd get the 50 out or the 70 to 200, and I'd be <laughs> closing in on something. And it's something I've not done for ages, that. And and I don't know why that is. It's just I, I tend to go, get what I get, and then think, right, I've got what I want now. Off I go. And it's, well, I'm honestly, I'm, 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 really, I'm really bad. I'm the opposite way, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't be like that. Mm-hmm. But to me, I think uh, the reason why a lot of people don't give up smoking is because it's that habit thing. Is the habit of yeah. getting the packet of fags and taking it off and opening it and lighting it up or whatever they do. I don't know. I've never smoked in my life. But to me, it's, it's oh, I couldn't think of anything worse than turning up at a location and wandering around all day and coming away with two pictures. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd rather come away with ninety-eight rubbish pictures and two good ones. Yes, because I've gone through the process of of getting my camera out of my bag, putting it on my tripod. <laughs> exactly, especially especially when you travel the distance like yourself yesterday going to Felix. I mean, that's quite a commitment to go somewhere. You're not just yeah. going to go and say three three shots and say right, I'm off now. Um, and I think probably maybe when I go further afield, when I have done, I've you know I've made more use of that, but. I was thinking the other day, I don't really do much, you know, intimate, abstract stuff, and I probably should explore a bit more of that, really. Um, well, what you're doing I'm, is fine enough, so I shouldn't panic too much. But, yeah, it is yeah. good. It's good to broaden your horizons, maybe, and, you know, I think having as well, uh, what I used to do, and I don't know whether it's um, something that I used to just do myself, that whether it's a good or a bad thing, but when, when I first started off in photography, um as a as aside from the learning aspect of it, I used to enter like local sort of competitions in the newspapers and stuff, yeah. um, online stuff, just to get my creative side going. And it made me look for those little shots, you know, and things like yeah. that. And it's a really good way of making you get out and do something. Because I think, you know, that day off or whatever you might have to go and take the shots, it's great. But if you've got a bit of a brief... And somebody says, well, this week's theme is whatever, macro or whatever. And you go when you oh. think about it, it's a good way. Then you, then that leads you into thinking, oh, well, look at that little rock there or mm. whatever. And it, and it just makes you get the camera out more and shoot more. It is good. And I, I suggest that, you know, everybody do the same thing. If you can get pictures and throw them into competition, it's a great way of learning. Don't mm. enter pictures into competition with the thought of winning because otherwise no. the chances are you're going to be disappointed. But let's, if anything, you're getting your work critiqued. You know, yeah. it's good that somebody says, oh, you, look, you know, it's a, it's a sh- shame, Jack, you were just there, but not quite. But look, let me yeah, explain yeah. the reasons why. Now, that's only their interpretation, but you know what? That could be very, very invaluable. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. invaluable. And I also think that's probably one of the negative things as being a, a professional photographer is that we don't enter enough pictures into competition. It's like one of those things... You probably didn't do it because if I entered a, p- a picture into competition and it didn't win, and Jack Appleton's picture won, but hang on a minute, I'm the professional. Now I'm yeah. just wondering if, if maybe that's the reason why maybe more professionals, or why maybe sorry professionals don't add pictures or enter pictures into competitions. I don't know. I don't know. I've not entered a picture into a competition for years, years and years and years, and yet you should do. I think it's interesting as well, especially with Facebook and stuff today, where there's so much imagery shared, and yeah. um, you know people do you know actively ask for critique, don't you know where they'll say, can, you know, I'm struggling, how can I improve this image? And um, you know, it is it is nice that people give positive, constructive stuff, but you also get a lot of negativity, and I think that's what scares people for putting stuff on. I mean, I've seen people put posts on Facebook, I don't know necessarily your group, but other groups, and they'll say, oh, well, I didn't want to post my pictures because uh, they're going to get ripped to bits by yeah. people. Yeah. And it's a shame that because you're never going to be able to better where you're going wrong if somebody doesn't tell you really because, 
you know, at the end of the day, you know, someone like self who's got years and years of knowledge can do it without thinking, but somebody who's, you know, done the grass from elbow, so to speak, that little <laughs> bit of knowledge, like, you know, does help you along the way, doesn't it? And, you know, for me, I think that's good because it, then next time I think when I go out, oh, um, is there anything in the corners of the shop like coming in or, you know, is the horizon straight or is it distorted? It just makes you think and then eventually it just comes naturally and you just do it because, you know, that's what you've, you've been practising. Sure. So, so I think, you know, it is good to do that. Definitely get a little bit of critique and uh, and it improves your work at the end of the day. Cool. I love critiquing. I love critiquing work, but I'm about to do it now in a second. And um, But I'm the first one to always say, you know, you've got to take critique with a pinch of salt. You know, if I tell you something's wrong, I can only tell you it's wrong on a technical basis. Yeah. Apart from that, I'll give you some suggestions, but you've got to draw a line at that because art is so subjective. And I always tell people, look, you know, if that's how you wanted the image to look, as long as that's how you wanted the image to look, then you've done a great job. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But that's yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It's very, very difficult because also, you know, people, I'm going to do the same thing now in a second and people might ultimately be disappointed with what I, I say about the pictures, but it's the only way. It's the only way to yeah. learn. It's the only way to learn. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it myself. If you, you know, you go back looking at some of my early stuff and I've got, you know, the skies blown out, these horizons that are slightly distorted and mm. whatever it might be. But I'm not going to delete them because I think that's part of my progression of getting a little bit better each time. By all means, I'm not saying I'm, you know, the best photographer in the world by any means, by any stretch of imagination, but... I feel as if I've improved in the three years or so that I've been doing it. And I think it's good to look back at stuff and think, oh, God, what was I thinking there? Or, you know, what was I doing there with the saturation slider or the, sh you know, the clarity slider, whatever it might be. Sure. But it's good to, I think, to revisit that and think, yeah, I can see where I was going wrong. And, you know, it was pointed out to me by whoever. Cool. Right. Well, um, Joe Frankel, uh, Joe Frankel's asked a question. What gear do you use? Joe, we've already covered that, my good friend. We covered that right at the beginning of the interview. By the way, for anybody out there that missed the beginning of the interview, I'll leave the interview up so you guys can see it. But if you want to check out the beginning, check it out in about two hours' time from now because I'll crop out the mess in about bit at the beginning because it's probably four or five minutes when i was messing around uh trying to trying to get the thing to work to begin with so just give it a couple of hours and go back and then watch it but i'll leave this full interview up online jack despite the fact that you're a mancunian Ooh. despite the fact that you're a reds <coughs> fan I'm, 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 I'm a leeds fan by the way but that's just between you and me oh, okay okay <laughs> i won't tell i won't tell anyone gary <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been an absolute joy and I mean this wholeheartedly you know brilliant yeah it's been nice really nice to speak to you as well but, but the thing is you know and I mean this from the bottom of my heart is that you know I've I've had some very accomplished photographers on here um, Adam Gibbs Nick's Page, Nick Page and obviously um, and Mads from last week and so on and so forth but what I'm interested in right is the skillful person behind the camera and mm -hmm. that's exactly what you are. So amateur, photo uh, professional, not really relevant. Fantastic photographers. So keep up the good work. Keep improving because we're all learning every day. Exactly. And yeah, yeah. And next time you want to come up here, give us a shout, mate, and I'll take you to, uh, to some, some nice places, especially if you want to go up to the Lake District. I'll, I'll keep you to that, Gary, really, all because uh, it's something I'd love to do, get up there and uh, explore a bit, especially with someone like yourself who's got the, the knowledge and the local uh, know-how. Yeah, but it's been really great speaking to you. Really, really enjoyed it. Thank yeah, you. It's been fascinating, mate. Thank you very much, Steve, for coming on. Thanks for agreeing to this, and you've been a, a lovely fella. Um, sort your posters out, though. I mean, come on, sort your posters out. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. You, you want to see this side of the room. No, you no, think that's bad. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you take care like i say keep keep doing what you do because what you do is fantastic and uh, and you take care all the best mate all right mate yeah brilliant thanks guys thanks everyone for the questions and i really enjoyed it brilliant all right mate cheers jack yeah take care see you gary bye 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 bye, bye, -bye. Right, okay, let me just check my volume because uh, like i said uh, all i say every week when we get rid of skype my volume goes through the roof so hopefully that should be fine. 
What a fascinating fella. Really, really, really nice. And seriously, the reason why I wanted to speak to Jack is just because, you know, obviously on my Facebook page, there's lots and lots of fantastic photographers that are posting lots and lots of fantastic pictures. But every now and again, there's, hang on. Okay, thanks, Tony. Uh, but every now and again, there's just that, that one that, I'm not going to say stands head and shoulders, but because I don't want to make it sound like, you know, he's the best by far we've got. I don't want to say that. Just for me, somebody who who ticks my boxes, that's all, because he's somebody who, who photographs a little bit like me. Um, so thank you very much indeed, Jack, for coming on. Blimey, look at that. It's, it's one hour and 50 minutes. I spent that long with Mads last week. I spent that long with Nick Page. So, wow, um, a fascinating bloke, a fascinating bloke indeed. Right, okay, guys, so let's very quickly rattle on. Um, 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 right, now, I'm totally caught out now, so let's have a quick look here. Um, 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 CC, okay, before I do some CCing, let's bring up the best of Facebook. Let's go through some of these Facebook pictures. What's the easiest way of doing this? All right, okay, All right. All right, okay, right, let's have a look at this, guys. Webcam, let's go webcam, let's go full screen there. Let's bring this up here, right, guys, okay. Um, just so you guys know, I didn't do it on Sunday. I wanted to do it on Sunday, but obviously the conversation I had with Mads went on for such a long time. It had been two and a half hours the show, and I didn't really want that. Um, so I'm going to rattle through these pictures because I want to do some CC in with you as well. But I think these are the pictures from Sunday working backwards. Okay, so anything from Sunday to now, I haven't looked at. And please... Please, please, if you don't take pictures as good as these, don't stop posting them because we're all different standards and it's how you learn. Keep posting pictures. My only worry about doing what I'm doing now, which is to show the best or what I consider to be the best of Facebook, is that people might think, oh, my pictures aren't that good, so I won't bother posting pictures. I don't want that to be the case at all. So make sure you do please continue to post your pictures. And not only that, but I'm gonna very quickly rattle through these pictures, but I'm gonna to explain to you on each image, very briefly, the reasons why I like a particular image. Right, okay. First one, uh, Alan, Alan Le Bon. Uh, but also don't use my Facebook group to just post your favorite pictures, because otherwise that won't work either. All right, um, Alan, right, okay. And without stating the obvious, I'm blown away by this picture. It's a it's a lovely, lovely picture. It's not one of those um, intentional camera movement things, or I certainly don't think it is, or if it is, it's one that's been combined. Uh, but it's it's great. If it's something he's done in post, really, really, really nice. And it's very, very arty. Something I've not seen before. And it's a it's a very different take on that skyline. And I think, Alan, that is brilliant. And you should do more of that, my friend. That is a first class picture. Um, Alex Overfelt, um, what's not to like about that picture? What a stunning, stunning picture. What a lovely composition. I love the, um, we mentioned earlier on about the letterbox feel. That really, really does work for me. And for all you guys out there who are new to photography, let me explain something as well that I really like about this image. Here on the right hand side, the sky. Let me just double check and make sure that we are on yeah, webcam and desktop. Okay, we are. Up here, you see the sky is at its very, very brightest. But take note, all of the sky detail is still there. The sky detail has still been maintained. Okay, it might sound a bit, well, obviously, but that's usually a beginner mistake is, you know, yeah, but I'm shooting into the bright sunlight. Therefore, the sky is overexposed. Don't leave anything overexposed. Try and maintain detail. Um, Alex, that is a stunning shot, my good friend. I love that. And I'd be very, very proud of that shot myself. Um, 
Colin, I love that shot. I just think it's really nice. It's a great take on a selfie. Don't know if you've had help doing it or whatever. And I just think it's just a really simple shot. Um, I love the lighting on your face as well. Basically, there's a lot of thought gone into this image. It's probably a composite when I say probably i'm not making that sound derogatory but i love this It's really really good the lighting within the car the lighting on the subject's face i'm assuming that's you colin and the composition i think works really really well so that's a great great shot keep doing some more of them colin keep doing more of them um it's that pierce bloke again it's that dave pierce bloke um, Dave, I really, really, really like this image. I think that is a surfer with the windsurf board on the shoulder with the subject walking. And I've mentioned this last week as well. Don't overdo this process, Dave. Just keep it to your good, good work. That's my only thing I would suggest to you. Uh, and I don't need to suggest anything to David because David's a very accomplished photographer. But that is very, very arty. And in that instance, it works, in my opinion, very, very well indeed. Uh, oh, Pierce again. David, again, don't overwork this, but I really, really like that. I love what, you, uh, what you're what you doing on a post-processing um, style -y. Can I use the word style -y at the age of nearly 60? <laughs> That's brilliant, I love that. Good job, Dave, nice mate. And again, Dave, Great, 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 great. What's that doing there, Dave? What's that doing there, bottom right? Love that shot. Really, really nice. Very nice. Um, David Blake, I love this uh, because it's the worn scale Bothy. Um, I came up here for my birthday, trying to find it. And the third time of climbing up here, I even came up here with Scooby, my dog, bless him. Nearly came up here with Scooby, my dog. We came up here in the same conditions with snow all over the place and took pretty much the same shot. That is a brilliant shot. But I'm only saying that, David, because I know how much effort has gone into that. No matter which way you traveled up, whether you traveled up from the slate mine or whether you traveled up from the bottom, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty decent hike up. I'm assuming you stayed there the night, did you, David? Um, David Bake, very, very nice, very nice. Um, Derek, Derek posts an awful lot. Derek, my good friend, he posts an awful lot. And I love that shot. I think it's a, it's a really, really nice shot. The eye works for me because it's in the rules of thirds perfectly, even though the bird's looking from left to right. I just think that's a really, really nice shot. And I like that an awful lot. Um, oh, guess who that is? <laughs> guess who that is mr appleton he's taking over the flaming show tonight jack love that mate yeah we spoke about it earlier on tonight i'm not going to say any more than that that is a delightful image i really like it and of course we've already spoken about this one as well i knew it was in there see jack i'd already pulled this one up before that you'd agreed to come onto the show to chat tonight um joe frankel joe obviously it's a composite I don't care whether it's a composite or not. I love the thought process. I love everything that's gone into this picture. The lighting is delightful. And this, to me, is a very, very, very nice image. Very nice. I even like the fact that you've caught the subjects back um, because that, that means an awful lot. Storytelling with the subject looking out. Very, very nice indeed. So well done, Joe. Um, John Punnett, yeah, I just like this, John. I do like this. It's just because it's just a nice shot. And without stating the obvious, if any one of us was stood where you were stood, we would all take the same shot because it is very, very nice. So well done, John. Um, Kevin Davis, the ISS. I don't pixel peep, but I want a pixel peep. Okay, yeah. There's a few gaps on there. So, um, just trying to figure it out. Um, ja uh, sorry, Kevin Davis, Kevin. Kevin's probably gone with, um, just trying to think maybe a three second or a five second, maybe even, no, sorry, 30 second, but with a two second gap, then another 30 second. But I love that shot. Again, it's not just the ISS. There's a lot of thought that's gone into that because you don't just take pictures of the ISS that look like this. You've captured it with the foreground 
and you've captured it with that lovely kind of spooky building with a little bit of light pollution in the background and a lovely sky. So that's a very well thought out image and I do like that. So Kevin Davis, uh, well done to you, sir, well done. Um, Mikey Swales, Mikey, 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 my good friend. This is West Water, I do like this. The water's very low at this point, by the way, for anybody that knows the Lake District, the water here is actually very low, but rarely do you ever see the water at West Water look like that with that lovely reflection there. So I think that's a very nice picture. So well done, Mikey, well done there, mate. Um, Nick Hampson, Nick, Nick, Nick. You guys need to stop, you need to post your pictures bigger, guys. See, now it looks a bit, yeah, we're losing the quality now, I'm having to make it bigger. Post your pictures slightly bigger on Facebook because it's not only me that will click on the image to get a closer look at it, other people will as well. And if it's a small image and they blow it up, it starts to look messy and you lose a bit of credibility. But I love that image, that composition. I love the walkway, I love the zigzag, draws your eye in. And I, I do love everything about this image and again, I'm saying I like it because it's one I would take if I was there as well. That is a lovely picture and well done for maintaining that detail in the sky. Um, Phil Longfoot, Phil, uh, very nice. I do like that. I think it's a great, great idea. Personally, I would have moved that sun across a bit. I don't know what your skill set's like in Photoshop, but this would be a much nicer shot in my opinion if that sun was a little bit further inwards but it's an easy job to do it'll take you 10 seconds personally i would move it across but phil that's a lovely shot so well done for seeing that that's a good good shot steve foreman um i think this has probably got one of the most likes from all of the pictures that i've shown tonight and for very good reason. That is a stunning picture. It's not a picture that I would ever consider taking. So I've no idea how you've had the 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 the, the forethought to take this, or I don't know how this picture's come about, but it's really, really, really nice. That has to be a print. Uh, Steve Foreman, well done, Steve. That's a lovely shot, my good friend. That is a great great image and all the detail i'll tell you about curtains and carpets one day <laughs> but that has got curtains and carpets and that's brilliant um steve Marson, steve i like that i do like me woodland photography i'm starting to do a bit more woodland photography although my last video was probably the worst video in terms of views out of any video i've put out for the past three and a half years so i'm not really sure what's going on with my youtube channel don't know if I've had my day or whatever, but I don't really know. Um, but yeah, I do like that. I just like it because it's just got all the ingredients. And I also like the fact that you've left the person and the dog in there as well, because it adds scale and it adds a bit of story. And I like that. So well done, Steve. Um, <laughs> Tony Emery, who else can see Tony placing, right? going into the woods and trying to find a nice leaf and placing it down on there because let's be honest we've all done it <laughs> and i've no qualms in it at all i think it's a very well executed picture it's very well balanced compositionally it just works a treat tony that gets my thumbs up that gets my thumbs up um is that them all um that's them all that is them all so well done guys like i say that's all the pictures i think from a, the week previous from sunday if anybody's posted any pictures since sunday i i have i've been so busy i haven't even looked at my facebook page so apologies about that but i'll cover that on the next one now let's very quickly talk about ccing your work if we can Okay, so let's talk about CCing your work. Let's do the same thing. Let's bring it up on the screen. Um, I'm assuming people are still there. Let's very quickly check. Can I check if people are still there? Guys, are you still there? Great shot, Nick. Thanks, Sandy Knight. You guys are having a conversation with each other. Mally Davis, Mikey, superb shot. Okay, Mally's still there. Hi, Mally. Good to see you again, my good friend. Jamie Overlord. Okay, right, you guys are still there. Phew. <laughs> okay, let's very quickly move on. 
Let's do some CC in desktop. Okay, let's have a look at this. Okay, I'll move on. Um, I haven't looked at these, by the way, I've just collected them. And I also think I've got a few more uh, in my inbox that have come through after the last show and I haven't dragged them out. So I apologize about that. Um, Christopher Easty, Easty Christopher. Um, okay, yeah, it's a nice shot. Nicely balanced. Um, the boat is in the right place in terms of rules of thirds. You've got um, a long exposure-ish there, which is all quite nice. Yeah, it's fine. Um, what? Not sure what's going on in the background up here. There appears to be a little bit of movement. And also, see the horizon? The horizon isn't quite... Uh, when I say the horizon, it might just be the way the bank feels in the background. But yeah yeah that's quite nice um christopher little things like this for me you know you've got this you could have removed that there for instance it doesn't need to be there and these little bits of things floating in the water i would have just made this image slightly less busy when i say less busy i mean they just we just don't need to have all these bits and pieces float around in the water but if that's what you want then that's what counts but i would have personally just lost those tiny little bits makes it a little bit messy and um, christopher again um that's not the same boat is it is it the same boat no different boat okay yeah much nicer long exposure interesting sky um good use of composition and good use of foreground interest as well yeah very very good i like that that's nice. What in Christopher? What I make? Very, very nice. Very nice. David Ellingsworth. David, David, David. Let's have a quick look at this. Um, I like that. That's really, really nice. Um, this is obviously one of those times when your 10 stop filter just wouldn't cut the mustard. And I do, do like that. Um, David, I'm going to do something you're probably going to hate me for. But I'm going to check that horizon because the horizon isn't level. Horizon's fine there, and I think it drops down there. Am I being a bit too picky? Don't know. Nice, like that. You've maintained all the detail. You've put the sun as well, slightly to the left-hand side uh, in the frame and not just thrown it in the middle. And I love the fact that those waves uh, are growling. That's a nice picture. Well done, mate. Cool, I like that. Um, Derek again. Ooh. Derek Warren, mate. Derek, 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 Derek. Let's just make that slightly bigger so you guys can see it. Now, I like this because this is the Lone Tree at Buttermere and um, what Derek has done is taken a different stance on it instead of just the Lone Tree. It's the Lone Tree plus, you know, a massive, without stating obvious, wide view of it and I really like it. Um, little things, Derek, you probably know where I'm going to go with this, but I don't like how that tree cuts off the edge of the frame. Two minutes, we're nearly done. Get the wife shouting at me now. Yeah, so for me, Derek, just that tiny bit there, mate, that's the only thing I would suggest. Um, Derek, look at the eyes on that. That is a great, great shot. You've done, you've done really, really well to capture that. When a, an animal, any animal comes towards you at speed, no matter what your camera, no matter what your equipment, you've done well to maintain focus on that. That's really nice. Love the colors on it as well. And I love the cropping. Well done, mate. I like that. Um, Derek again, love that, mate. That's really, really nice. Yeah, okay, I do like it. I love the way that you've worked that tree into the composition. In other words, you've thought long and hard about creating this image, and I like that. That's really, really, really nice. Again, it's all too easy just to stand on top of a mountain when it's a new moon and took a picture of the solar system and voila, but you've thought that process through and you've thought it through very well indeed. John Cusick, Cusick, Cusick. Do you want to make these bigger all the time? 
Um, not sure where you are there. Is it West Water again? I can't remember. Um, yeah, like that compositionally, it works fine for me. Um, I like the black and white. The black and white works really well. Yeah, um, yeah, I do like it. I can't really find fault with it. I don't know how I could find fault with it. Maybe the foreground interest and the background interest are both on the left-hand side, but I'm probably being a little bit picky there. So to me, that works a treat. Very, very nice indeed. All that detail in the sky nearly is all there as well, so that works. Um, John again. Yeah, I like that, John. I do like it, but you know, I I take pictures of you know floating seaweed all the time, and I just to me sometimes it just looks bitty and messy. I just wondered if you were to stand on the front of these rocks, assuming you could, and you retook that shot without any of this in the foreground, if it would be a nicer picture. I'm guessing it probably would be, but to me. It's a lovely composed picture. The lighting and everything is fantastic. I just don't like all that seaweed stuff there. That's the only thing that I don't like. Um, Katerina, Katerina, very, very nice indeed. You've got the sun where the sun should be on the left-hand side, just above the horizon, above the road. And you've got the main part of the interest, which is the bridge here. Perfect in terms of rules of thirds. I like that. Um, um, again, yeah, see this is, again, you'd not use a 10 stop filter. It's not a two minute exposure. The C looks like it should do. And to me, it looks perfectly fine. And I'm happy with that. See, fine, good, happy. It's all good, isn't it? <gasps> Reese Davis, Reese, Reese, Reese. Um, yeah, without stating the obvious, this is a terrific shot, except one, I, ju I don't know if this shot works when water doesn't fall down the sinkhole. Maybe it does because there isn't water falling down the sinkhole. The only thing I don't like about this, Reese, is the lack of detail and a bit of haloing around there. So you've really worked that sky detail to try and bring it back. You see all up around here. That's the only thing I don't like is missing detail. Yeah, but I love the composition, I love the angle, everything, just that missing detail is the only thing, Reese, that I'm not keen on. Um, Tony the Wall, Tony. Um, I haven't looked at any of these images, so I'm guessing, Tony, that might be a stitched pano. And yeah, it's fine if you've done a stitched pan pano. Um, um, lots of it is off balance for me. You've got the horizon right, Rules of third, compositionally, it kind of works, but that tree, I wouldn't have had that tree there because that tree is just like tucking in on the end of the frame. And also one last thing, it's just, I don't know if it's just a little boring, that's all. It's, rules of thirds, great. Pano stitched well, lighting fine, but the subject needs to be a bit more exciting to look at, I feel personally. Um, Tony the wall, Tony, very different shot uh, that you've taken there. You think you've called it three people or something. I'm not quite sure what you've called it. And I, I quite like that. I do quite like that. I think that works quite well. Um, yeah, the YMCA shop, shop. Good, cool. Right, okay. So if anybody has sent me any pictures after last Sunday. I apologize. I haven't looked at my emails yet. So uh, sorry, I'm not going to do your pictures. We've been going since uh, what two hours and 13 minutes. It was only going to be an hour show tonight. That's all. <laughs> I've even got the wife shouting at me. Um, but listen, thank you very much indeed. I'll let you know on Facebook when I'm going to do my next one. I've got a couple of guests already lined up. Like I said, if you didn't catch me on Sunday, you can catch all of the shows by going onto my YouTube page. But I'm not going to be doing this every week because I need to spend more time doing other photography jobs. Um, but thank you very much indeed for being here tonight. And of course, thank you very much indeed to Jack. 
If you want to check out all of Jack's work, then all of uh, the links to his socials are down below. Click on that and have a look because his work is exemplary. And when you think that he literally only bought his camera gear in 2017, wow, he's come on in leaps and bounds. So love to see where his work is in five years time from now. Guys, take care, keep posting pictures and keep watching the videos and keep the love and the support coming. And thank you very much indeed for being here tonight. Cheers, guys, everybody. Good night. See ya.